I muted myself, but I'm I'm here. The audio is working. Don't worry, the audio is working. The 
Hello. I really hope this works. Hello. Does it work? Oh, thank I God. It looks working. like it's kind of working. I think really it's going to work. My, my concern now is can people on my stream hear you guys? Do I, I don't oh have to do God. anything different, do I? Oh, my God. Yeah. Can oh. everybody hear each other? And can we all each hear other? each other? <laughs> I can hear oh, you. God. I think everybody can hear you when both of you talk on my stream because I'm sharing the desktop audio. Yes, yeah, same. <laughs> People can't hear you, they... but not them. I can't hear Kurt. We can't hear Kurt or John. What? <laughs> Why not? 
So we got to share desktop audio. Desktop yes. audio is coming through because both because I and should be coming through both of your desktop audios, and you <sighs> both are coming through my desktop audio. Okay, well, I just I turned can't... my desktop audio on. Let me know. I I just turn it on. So yeah. Desktop. Audio. Oh hey, okay, I'm good. I'm working now. We're back. My everyone can hear you guys now for me. So killer. Almost. I don't think people could hear for me. What about? <laughs> All right, let's get a. Te can you take a photo of your screen? No. <laughs> no. Well, okay, because I know what's going on. I know what the issue is. Okay. Um, okay. The. I'm just checking my my stream. Oh my god, I don't want no wonder they're Thanks saying in the chat. It's going so patience. quick. But thank you for being here. Um, no, I don't have the desktop i know what you're talking about what to click um and i'm trying to find it so it allows desktop audio to be heard and for whatever reason it's not here can you guys try talking again really quick check one yeah, check two it's not getting you guys there. check 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 um yeah it wants to just get me huh um <laughs> Okay. They do not make this stream together easy. They, they really, really do don't. But also, you guys, I don't know. If you just open all of them at once, you'll be able to hear everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just open all of them at once. What's the big deal? All at the same time. So everyone can chill out. Browser source. Okay. Wait. Ooh. Ooh. I think Hello? I might. Hello? Did it work? Hello? 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 Hello. It's great. We'll do our monologues and then you say it's perfect. And then no one on you, everyone on your stream will see nothing, nothing wrong. I know. Oh my God. Um, now we hear nothing. Now they hear nothing? <laughs> what? What does that mean? On my... On my OBS, I just had to go to source and do it as a new source and share. Oh, you did? Desktop. Wait. Yes. Let me try that. That also will work. Um, which source did you choose? Audio source? I just audio did Mac, output Mac OS. Yeah, but you're not a Mac, but I choose like basically audio output from desktop. Audio output capture. Perfect. Oh, God. I'm going to make this shit work. Audio output capture. <laughs> yes, is it working now is yeah, it working now is it working now these are words i'm saying guys hello hey, test chat, test test mariah's chat, chat. mariah's chat nope. ah! emojis emojis in the chat for mariah ah! oh god <laughs> this is bad oh my god i don't understand what people are just saying sometimes i look up you know what <laughs> in six months they're gonna look back on this stream hey you remember when they did the stream and Things weren't working. Everything's going to be those, working. Those fine. three incredibly famous Twitch streamers that have now yeah, gone how, on to new heights the, of success. Yeah, what? Yeah, how, the, this, they're it all started publishing here. a book. It all started. Okay, so out um, desktop audio capture didn't work, right? Hosting VidCon. <sighs> this Listen, is good energy. If it doesn't to take work for mine, I don't really care because everyone can just have it open. I don't have a lot of stakes in my Twitch channel for it being serious. So it's okay if <laughs> I'm happy Listen, about everybody. This is, this is two more that we had working the last time. That's this true. is actually Nothing's pretty crashing. exciting. We have this made is, incremental cr progress. Pretty. It's about 1% every day. So. And it's just because I'm, <laughs> it's about 1%. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just don't understand why it doesn't want to. In audio output capture. Yes. How did you get it to get your desktop? You guys are all getting um, chat. Audio output capture, add source. It says the only thing it supports is desktop audio. So then if you just click add source and then name it, oh. and then after that, yeah. I'm gonna try it, but then it might, it might make this. This is good because I feel like people will see us not just this three of us this but photo the, so people you, are always um, like 
So when you Sorry, yes, John, you can. So take when you over. add the uh, audio desktop capture, it should then give you a list of source settings. Maybe a list of. <laughs> so what? Okay, just tell me what you see so that I know where you are. <laughs> After you yeah, add a well, source and then I, add I mean, I got, audio Yeah, output. I got the output, the audio output one, and then it takes me immediately to this page that says audio output, and it's like the little, a little, uh, it goes down so you can see like device default, use device timestamps. Do you see that page or not even at all? Um, I, see I swear to God. Device, yeah, I see it. Yes. Yeah. So, why? How do I get it to work? Okay. <laughs> so, because on so Mixer it still won't show. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, test. I don't think so. Okay. So right, no. At this very top of that window that you were describing, there should be yep. source settings. Yep. And global settings. Yep. Um, we want to make sure. Go click on global settings first. Yep. I yes. And then scroll down. There should be desktop audio device one and two. Can you make sure they're not disabled? Uh -huh. Are they on Wait. default or are they disabled? They're disabled. Okay, so then take them from disabled and put them to default. They won't go to default. Okay. That's the only option is disabled. If you click them, nothing happens. If you click the word disabled, nothing happens. <laughs> It opens up and it says it's the only option. Okay. Then I think maybe you have to go into your global settings <laughs> and do desktop audio device. So you go to settings, output. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, settings, audio, the global settings. So like the bottom left-hand corner of Streamlabs. You know what's so crazy know, is you're trying to explain this to me, and do you know what's going through at the same time? Fucking what? Dylan's voice got my foot on the gas every two seconds, and I'm so thankful for people following. That's I'm really, really so cool. thankful, um, and it means a lot. But I'm like, John. That's really, really cool. <laughs> that's why I, I fucking quit like the I'm Apple store, my mind. and uh, I'm done. <laughs> I, that's why I don't work at the fucking Genius Bar anymore. Because you know of what? People like this. You guys, if you want to just lurk on this stream, you can. I'm I'm not even really, don't worry about it. We're just going to go and we'll figure well, listen, it out. I was going to say, this is great because I feel like sometimes whenever we get delayed, whether it's dark at things or whatever, people are like, oh, they're just, and it's like, I want people to know this stuff is tricky. Okay. This stuff takes a long time to figure out. So yeah, it does, I realize, you know? I realize now people are saying they can't hear my widget sounds either. So it's just all my desktop sound is not going through is what I'm realizing. Oh. Um, well, I'm living in a land of torture, just listening to. <laughs> come and put it over and over again. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fine, guys. Don't worry about it. Um, what do we want to do, boys? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to do monologues and scenes. That's what I want to do. Yes. Yeah, this is an acting or workshop. Or play Baldur's Gate. Really. Game. Guys, um, I started I started two new Baldur's Gate playthroughs. I'm playing with my friends at night, and then I started one for Twitch. But I really want to play with you both. He didn't even tell so, us. Out there. You didn't even tell us. You didn't even tell how us is, that. How is playing with your other friends? They invited yeah. me, and I didn't even know you could do this. And apparently, you can cross save from PC and Mac to your to PS5, so uh -huh. you can open up. So it's it's great. It's great. That's actually really cool. And it I hope you're having cool. a fun time. I'm also. It's having. I'm. I'm a little. I'm still hurt that <laughs> I have not been invited to a party. With Wait, you. no. I want to do a party. I don't know how to make one. I will have to figure that out because they were just like, "What are you doing? Join us in Baldur's Gate." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> That's pretty nice. But, but then they keep playing without me sometimes, which no, is totally fine. But then I'll be like, where are we now? But n now I've played through so much of it that they'll be doing stuff. And I'm like, do I tell them what we should be doing right now? Like, <laughs> they'll be like, let's go over here. And I'm like, uh, well, I think we should really go in this building. And they're like, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> it's, um, well, I, I think we should play this. We should do a stream where we just play. Yeah. Baldur's Gate. 
because I, I, I really want to do an evil run. I spent an hour. I spent an entire hour just making a character with people on Twitch. I made a character named Thespis. It's Kill a tiny it. little halfling. And they're a bard and they're very they're just a theater kid. That's all they are. That's very cute. That's great. <laughs> and and you know what? When I did my actually, would you guys be annoyed if I take out these headphones? Because maybe they'll be able to hear you guys through my mic. Is that dumb? Yeah. To try no, that? Wouldn't, I wouldn't and, be annoyed. And then I have a response. Nothing okay. will ever annoy me. Except Kurt maybe. not inviting me to play Baldur's Gate. Yeah, yeah, that's. I not... want to do it. I, I, the second I figure out how to make a game, I'll invite. I just, I haven't even. I will make a game you... and invite both of you. Did you guys all hear them? Wait. Hello, I think testing. This is, like, actually is it working? working? Is it working? Is it working? Testing, testing, testing. Oh. Yep. Oh, <laughs> what a rogue and peasant slave am I? We're live. Sorry to Taylor, who's getting our whole show tonight, baby. Yes, <laughs> we're in. Get Taylor in here. I so saw one headphones? comment. I don't know who it was. I'm so sorry. It was going so fast and there's so many colors, but I saw someone say I can hear them and now you can hear that shit. Um, but I was hearing like ever so they're like we can hear it ever so faintly through the headphones and I was like, "Now wait a damn minute." If that's the case. <laughs> um, okay, great. That's where we're that's where we're at. Um All right, guys. Now back in to it. Kurt we're not in inviting us in. Yes. Um <laughs> Back to what's important. Listen, I yes. just got a PS5 like a week ago, less than a week, and I don't, I didn't know how to do multiplayer. I don't even know if we can do, can we do multiplayer? Because you guys are on PC, right? Yes, you still can. That's can what's great about yeah. it. You can, can do, do cross-platform. Oh my God. Okay. You're going to hear all of these. <laughs> I didn't even know that was possible. Okay. This changes everything because I didn't make the game. So this is why I That's didn't okay. say the party is happening. I can't invite. So now that I can make the party. I'm going to invite you guys. That's great. They, uh, now I can make the party. I'll invite you guys. Um, <laughs> by the way, I would just like to say, because we're acting on this stream, I yes. am using my pokey cup um, for actors. Amazing. Um, oh, very I'm, at an, I'm at an acting studio right now. So Amazing. I'm very, John, what yeah, about we're you? fully immersed. Um, I'm using my acting water glass that I use every time I act. I have this glass, this particular glass of water. Um, just. And how has it gone just, for you? Um, just like this glass, I'm transparent. <laughs> so you can see right through me. That's kind of um, nice. Um, are you guys hearing all my alerts? And is it come food on the gas? Yes, every time. Whoa! And honestly, Whoa, I don't what hate is it. a hype train? What is a hype train? Guys? Hype, Did you get a hype uh, train? It's a super uh, hype train. Um, it, I'm gonna it's, mute this alert. It's great. Now. It's uh, it's basically, it encourages people to keep interacting and get the food on the gas. Jesus. <laughs> uh, I think the I'm point so here thankful is for everybody. Dylan needs a Grammy. Um, it's a Grammy. Okay, here we go. I got this shit on lock right now. I th <laughs> please keep keep subscribing to Mariah. Keep following because we we really appreciate the support so that we can keep doing this every single day. We, John. No, I, I. Yes, I agree with John. I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm being a bitch. <laughs> But I'm just, I'm just a frustrated little girl. I think I fixed. This is good because so the monologues I've now, picked, so picked for you today. Um, yes, let's transition. Use this let's energy. Transition. Let's transition. Let's 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 do transition. a bowl. let's do a physical warm up. Let's everybody oh get up. What? Everybody up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, One, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Ah! One, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 um, not me. I'm in July. Kurt, I'm you're in June. July too. Oh, you're in June? Kurt? June, June yeah. June, Kurt. Does that mean, Does that mean Kurt goes first? I think, I think you should that means Kurt goes first. Act first? Oh, man. Or pick first. Or pick. I think act first, right? I think he should act. 
I think he should act too. He's your acting first. Let's do it. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> um, that's great. So um, okay, great. Kurt, would you like to do some Shakespeare? Yeah, yes. Kurt, do you want Shakespeare yes. or contemporary first? Yes. Okay, he said Shakespeare. He said Shakespeare. I'll, we'll we'll right, move great, forward great. through the the history of theater and I think so. Fashion. I agree. We start great, 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 great. with the old. I win. Okay, yeah. great. Come to the new. This is How good. Would the old I love the this. Sharpay Evan. All right, so here's what I would like to do, Kurt. Um, I'm I've got the chair. I've got the acting hat. The at the the teacher hat. Here's what I would love for you to do. I know you're already familiar with this monologue, so I'm going to shake it up. Yes. So what I would love for you to do first um, is I'm going to have you do the monologue right away. And then take as much time as you want, moment moment before, et cetera, et cetera. And then what I'm going to have you do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down each part of the monologue. And I'm going to ask you to summarize in your own words. So you're going to be doing a lot of paraphrasing. In your I'm own words, anxious. these different moments. You don't need to be anxious. Stop it. Okay. Okay. So I'm healed. So, <laughs> so all you have to do, all you have to do is paraphrase it, memorize your own words. Okay. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna send you as well the first folio version of monologue. Wait, um, John, can you Go send ahead. it to me so I can follow along? Yeah. Well, we have a Discord. We have a Discord chat going. Well, how do you know? I did this. I did this piece when I was seventeen. We did a production of Macbeth, and Great. my I directed it. And my interpretation was that it was all like the Matrix, and I wore Ooh, a very really cool fun. trench coat. Wait, what? I wore a very cool trench coat. Was this in? And I thought I was high school changing theater. Yes. Did you do this at the <laughs> International <laughs> Thespian Conference? No, no, no. Well, then somebody stole your idea. Because when I was at the International Thespian <laughs> Conference in high school, somebody did a The Matrix Macbeth, and they also had skateboarding on stage and a half pipe <laughs> on stage where know. they were sca- they were like doing half pipe tricks while in the middle of this Matrix uh, Matrix Macbeth show and finger on the pulse, you know, we just fucking yeah. killer. Um, <laughs> all right, so that's the. Um, I'm also uploading mine onto here, and I don't want I. I'm letting you guys know now. I don't know why I titled it this. <laughs> I did title it "Act Monkeys." Um, so don't be shocked <laughs> <laughs> when wow. you get the file. <laughs> Act Monkeys. Uh, Act. But it's all you'll see all the little four scenes. Um, you'll know what they're, you'll, yeah. Okay. 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 <sighs> Um, so, uh, okay. So this is great. I am so fucking excited about this. Thank you, Kurt, for letting me, for being the guinea, guinea pig. So oh, yeah. I've just sent it to you. When Please don't. Or, or do it. Goes. So Mariah, you're, you can, I just put it in the group chat. You can look, look it up yeah, there. If people along. want to follow along at home, uh, I will <laughs> post it in the Twitch. Or not, I'm sorry, not, I'll post it in the uh, streamlines. Okay, uh, Kurt, take your time whenever you're ready. Um, thank right. you for <clears throat> being so generous with your talent. This is Macbeth, Act One, Scene Seven. That's right. <clears throat> Enter Macbeth. Is what it says. <sighs> if it were done, when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his sure seas success, that but this blow might be the be-all, end-all here. But here, upon this bank and shoal of time, well jump the life to come. But, oh, I messed it up. With his, ah, nah, nah. But in these cases, we still have judgment here, that we but teach bloody instructions which, being taught, return to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then, as his host, who should against the murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off. And pity, like the naked newborn babe, 
striding the blast over heaven's cherubim, horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air, will blow this horrid deed in every eye. The tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition, which o'erleaps itself and falls on the other. And see. Yes. Okay. <laughs> really, really, really great already. <laughs> it's clear you have a lot of great energy and you know a lot of these ideas. Um, I'm going to push you a little bit if, with your permission. Right. Guys, push I'm me. walking out of frame, but I can hear you. I can hear you. So first of all, okay. amazing. Clearly, you know this really well. Thank you. My first feelings watching you do this is, number one, you should play this part. <laughs> and it's also in your, like, range and your age. Like, you could yep. clearly play this part. So keep in mind, any, any ideas that I'm, that I'm talking about with you are just, they're, they're fodder, they're food for thought for the future when you eventually are offered the part or offered to audition. Okay? When you're offered the part. Got it. Okay. So the first thing, the first thought when you started was you were very sure of yourself, which I think was also just yep. a part of like, because we're all friends and we're playing along, but like you were smiling and, and like having a good time. And I think I have to ask you, what is Macbeth doing in this monologue at the top of the monologue? Like, what is he, what is the, it's some, like, what is the purpose of him coming out on stage and thinking about all this? What is he going to do? His wife has just basically been like, yo. If we knock this guy off, we can just take over. So he's coming out being like, huh, if I am going to do it, which I'm kind of into the idea, we better do it really fast. Because if we make a mess of it, if we take too long with it, we could get caught. But then his conscience starts to catch up. But at the beginning, he's kind of like, all right. Okay, Who is this guy to you as well? Is he a stranger? That's, that is do you know this guy? Is he your friend or, or is a stranger? No, no, no. He's like, he's like... He's like your uncle or something. Like the king is like somebody that he has been tutored and mentored by and like knows. Uh, and so it's kind of like it, it, at first, I think in the play, like he's kind of hesitant. But then his wife is like, no, 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 listen, listen, like this is your time, dude. And so he starts to kind of be seduced by that idea. And is like, yeah, maybe I could do it. Yeah. What if I did it? And so he's kind of hyping himself up. OK. Yeah. Great. Um just to raise the stakes a little bit at the beginning, I want you to think that this is like your best friend. Kurt Mega's best friend in the world that you're going to go do this to. <laughs> That's the first thing. Um, sure. Then let's, yeah. uh, then I want to summarize. Okay, so, so you summarized the first part already that if it were done, it's done, it'd be, it's a, let this be done quickly. Um, so what is it, why is he, if he's trying to hype himself up, why, why is, what is he doing in the next idea? But in these cases, so, okay, let, so in the monologue, summarize the next he idea in the monologue. to get monologue. hesitant, yeah. So, he, but in these cases, we still have judgment here. Because he's yeah. going... Go ahead, sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, he's worried because he's saying, he's saying, wait a second, it's not as simple as that. Like, just the fact that I will do this could potentially open up an entire can of worms, and it actually could come back to haunt me in pretty profound ways. When he says, you know, this even-handed justice communes the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's basically saying, I'm trying to poison somebody else, and yet I'm actually drinking from it myself. And then he kind of starts to unravel as he talks about the fact that this is his, his, you know, somebody he looks up to, somebody he admires. He says, he's my kinsman, and I'm his subject, you know? And then also, he's the one hosting him. So he's yes. like, it'd be like if I invited you over and was like, what if I killed John? Though? Yes. And it's like, no, I'm letting John, I'm letting John sleep in our guest bedroom. But what if I killed him? You know, it's like, that's kind of the, that's kind of the idea. Yeah. And that is a moment that you, that is, that is a thought that, cause you're trying, you come in, hyped yourself up, but then you're like, the more you think about it, you have that idea in, in this next time you do it. I want you to have, imagine that you just, you had this idea. You just, dis you discovered this idea just as you're saying it. Like, wait a minute. No, no, no. I, I, he is yeah. here in two, two ways. First is what you just said. And then second is the second thing. Um, okay. So that's idea. Yeah, that idea is right. clear. And then, um, 
Beside, and then, so what is this, I, the next phrase? Besides this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his office that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation he, of his taking off. What does that mean? He, he starts to get really uh, uh, remorseful about what he's going to do. He starts thinking about Duncan's character, and he's talking about the fact that he's, he's meek, he, he's been a wonderful leader, um, he's been he's been a great, you know, uh, uh, person, and now he's considering offing him, and uh, now he's starting to really wonder the the ethics of that. And he says the fact that he's such a good person, everyone is so he's beloved by everyone that his virtue will plead like angels. It's like it's going to really upset people. He's not just some corrupt person; he's actually a really good good at what he does, and he's a decent person. And so it's kind of even more nefarious. It's like, wait, you're going to kill this guy? And then he starts to really spiral when he's saying, like, it's it's everyone is going to know what I've done. He says, hey, strike him on the blast, uh, uh, shall blow this horrid deed in every eye. Like, everyone is going to know and be wrecked and devastated by this thing. And then he's like, I don't think I can actually do it anymore. I thought I could, and now I can't. And then right when the monologue ends, that's when Lady Macbeth comes in and is like, do it. Do it, dude. And she talks him into it. Awesome. Oh, you mean she seduces perfect. him into it. You are abs- – you, this is, that is so well summarized. Great. Thank no, you for I just asking. I made a bad joke. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you for allowing me to ask you to summarize all of those things. I don't want to spend the whole year or the whole hour doing that, Let's asking you to summarize bit by bit. Can we do it one more time and then just raise the stakes again? Uh, oh, I got it. I lost him. I lost him too. He acted We've too been... close to the sun. He's back. Oh, there we go. He yeah, acted I'm too back. close to the sun. <laughs> He's back. Again, don't you, even worry about will, it. You would play this part one day if you want to. I think just let's. Can we do it one more time before we shift to a new monologue or do scene? Yes. yes. And I like doing do them again. two times. That's I like fun. that too. So perfect. This is your best friend, who you're that that you're going to do this to, and the like he and he is one of the best it's like killing jfk or like one of the best people to ever exist because as soon as it happens everyone will weep like so yeah After i think this one may i do audience compliments please you, i'm i'm your audience director audience all right and notes, whenever they're, ha- they're broken up We're back. Okay, we're back. I okay, don't we're have back. any notes. I don't have any my notes. Internet is we're back. Not enjoying this. Sorry. I, 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 um, yeah, mine <laughs> either. Um, okay, whenever you're ready. All right. All right. <clears throat> if it were done when tis done, then twill of the done. Twill, I can't speak. Starting over. Reset. It's okay. <clears throat> you know what's happening is you're thinking, and that's really good. Okay. <laughs> If it were done when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his sure sea success that but this blow might be the be all end all here. But here upon this bank and shoal of time will jump the life to come. But in these cases we still have judgment here. That we but teach bloody instructions which being taught returns to plague the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He is here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed, and then as his host, who should against the murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off, and pity like the naked newborn babe striding the blast over heaven's cherubim horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air shall blow this horrid deed in every eye that tears will drown the wind i have no spur to prick the sides of my intent but only a vaulting ambition which o'erleaps itself and falls on the other Ooh! <laughs> acting <laughs> That was fucking that great. That was so lovely. <laughs> that, that was, was so beautiful. great. Nice. Like, <laughs> it's so nice when you hear Shakespeare like 
be over a webcam and feel cinematic and like talk see <laughs> mariah <laughs> see that was really beautiful <laughs> It's because it's because the stakes are so high, just like in musicals. There's no other way to treat this moment except by speaking in verse. And Kurt, you Real. fucking nailed it. Kurt, you watch beautiful. Benedict Cumberbatch do Shakespeare? Yeah. Jake. Man. Yes. Watching watching him do Shakespeare, I feel like that. Where like, you know, there's some actors that do it, and you just go, oh, right. Yes, there's some words that are are you know strange and bizarre, but you understand it. You were like, I know what he's saying. That's Maybe I don't the thing. know what that word meant, but you just That's... feel. And I feel like he's he's he in particular. I've seen some of his work, and it's just oh, it's extraordinary. It's extraordinary. I love him. His well, what you just, just did was extraordinary. Ridiculous. What you Thank you, you thought Absolutely. through every idea, and I felt personally emotionally affected. So thank you for doing it. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Thank you for right. starting that off too. <laughs> that was beautiful. Mariah? I feel like John has to act. Okay. I feel like you. All right. Wait, do we have anything old school want... for John? I can do not. your I can do the monologue you picked for me. <laughs> that I, I, picked? I also picked a I also picked a pretty good one for you too, John. Wait, I don't know if it's wait. old school, but What did you I'll... pick for John again, Kurt? Did you already say? I picked I picked Christopher Walken's monologue from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> About the watch. Okay. That's very exciting. <laughs> okay. You said to I, I, um, I'll tell what I picked it's in for the, John. It's in the messages. Um, I picked the critically acclaimed um, Meryl Streep, Devil Wears Prada, Cerulean monologue. Um, John, you will be doing both of these, so it's just a matter of what you feel. I mean, do you, am I allowed to go twice? Who, and who's directing? Or, or, who's, I think who, we direct what we picked out for each other, right? I thought that I was the I guess so, unspoken. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I've got both of them uh, turned up. I think Pulp turned Fiction up. would be fun to start with. Okay, I can do that. I feel like um, it's serious. There is some language in this monologue. There is some language. Kurt, yeah. do you have anything I just, should just know? Just put it or out say? there in the chat. You can always filter. Do you know this movie at all? Do you know? I do. You know I'm very well. I know the movie very well, but I but I don't know if there's right. something else. Right. No, no. I just, I just like this monologue. It's so mm. weird. <laughs> it happens. It's such a weird moment, and it's little little baby Bruce Willis finding out uh, about uh, about this watch and where it came from, and it's why the watch is so important to him. Wait, is it? Did you send it in the chat, Kurt? Am I allowed to use a prop? It's in the uh, yeah. It's in the. In Discord? Yeah, you can use a prop. Yeah. I just want to see if I can it's use, Discord, a, use yeah. my watch. It says, it says Captain Coons. I found him. <laughs> the first um, line. I don't want to say it. It's not mine to say. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good monologue. Okay. Uh, I don't, I can't do a, I could probably do a, a Christopher Walken impression, but I'm not going to. Obviously, because that's not what this is about. No, 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 no. Unless you want me to. Make it your own. All right, make it my own. No, is there anything you want me to John say to before I go into it? Is there something I should know or think about? Or no, I think uh, this is this is uh, this is like a, I think like it's I feel like this is probably a story that he's been waiting to share with his son for a very long time. You know what I mean? Yeah, with so with this kid. Go. Okay, yeah, I guess that now makes he's sense. like yeah now he's like old enough to know the legacy. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. Look at okay. him. An actor prepares. All right. <laughs> Give me a th well, what? I gotta do something. I gotta get something in my head. No, I know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to find. I pulled up the freaking script and it's gone. I should All just right. watch. I should just watch. All right. Because I was reading it like subtitles. Okay. Okay. Hello, little man. Hang on, I just gotta mute Mariah. Let me see here. No. <laughs> mute. Take the take it again. Okay, look, okay, okay, okay. Let me mute Mariah. All right, here we go. Okay. Hello, little man. Boy, I sure heard a bunch about you. 
See, I was a good friend of your dad's. We were in that uh, Hanoi pit of hell together for over five years. Hopefully you'll never have to experience this yourself, but when two men are in a situation like me and your dad were for as long as we were, you take on certain responsibilities of the other. If it had been me who had not made it, Major Coolidge would be talking right now to my son, Jim. But the way it turned out is I'm talking to you, Butch. I got something for you. This watch I got here was first purchased by your great-grandfather during the First World War. It was bought in a little general store in Knoxville, Tennessee, made by the first company to ever make wristwatches. Up until then, people just carried pocket watches. It was bought by private doughboy Ryan Coolidge the day he set sail for, for Paris. This was your great-grandfather's war watch, and he wore it every day he was in the war. Then, when he had done his duty, he went home to your great-grandmother, took the watch off, put it in an old coffee can. And in that can it stayed till your granddad, Dane Coolidge, was called upon by his country to go overseas and fight the Germans once again. This time they called it uh, World War II. <laughs> Sorry. Your great-grandfather gave this watch to your granddad for good luck. Unfortunately, Dane's luck wasn't as good as his old man's. Dane was a Marine, and he was killed along with all the other Marines at the Battle of Wake Island. Your granddad was facing death, and he knew it. None of those boys had any illusions about ever leaving that island alive. So three days before the Japanese took the island, your granddad asked a gunner on an Air Force transport named Wenaka a man he had never met before in his life, to deliver to his infant son, who he had never seen in flesh, his gold watch. Three days later, your granddad was dead, but Wanaka kept his word. After the war was over, he paid a visit to your grandmother, delivering to your infant father his dad's gold watch. This watch. This watch was on your daddy's wrist when he was shot down over Hanoi. He was captured and put into a Vietnamese prison camp. He knew that if they ever saw the watch, that it'd be confiscated, taken away. The way your dad looked at it, this watch was your birthright. He'd be damned if any slopes were going to put their greasy hands on his, bo on his boy's birthright. So he hid it in the one place he knew he could hide something, his ass. Five long years he wore this watch up his ass. And then he died of dysentery. He gave me the watch. Real. I hid this uncomfortable hunk of metal up my ass for two years. Then after seven years, I was sent home to my family. And uh, and now, little man, I give the watch to you. <laughs> that was bad. That was rough. How was that bad? That, there's so, it was such a, it's just such a long story, and it's, it's, it's there's so much detail work that I haven't done at all. So oh, anyway, that's, that's the beauty of a cold read, though. That's you know. yeah, you're right. Cold reading. You're right. Be we haven't you're practiced right. any of these. I I felt you created a, a lot of a, 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 there was an intimacy to the piece. I, did I felt too. like my father was speaking to me. It was warm. It was kind. I liked it. Oh, Next cool. time, I Mariah is up on stage doing that scene with with <laughs> Steph and Pete. I'm gonna be up in the front row <laughs> laughing my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did something funny. If I did something funny, I'd be happy you laughed. That's, <laughs> that's the tea. That's fair. <laughs> it was just so, it was such a good funny delivery, and I don't know why. I mean, I guess it's Christopher not, Walken it's, it is, is not a funny, funny scene. But something. No, it is a funny scene. Funny I, You're right. Yeah. It just, you it's know what, who it reminded me of, of was like, because I, have, I haven't watched Pulp Fiction in so long, so I honestly don't even remember how he does it. It's but great. how you were doing it, John, reminded me of one of my favorite, I think you should leave sketches, the one oh. with, um, <laughs> what's his name? The, like, triples his best. Bob, like, Bob Odenkirk. Actually... That's one of my favorite Bob sketches. Bob Odenkirk. That's one of my favorite you ones. You are really in that place, and it's like, and she's beautiful, but she's dying. You know, <laughs> it was, like, really giving that, and I <laughs> love it so much. She's beautiful, yeah. but she's dying. It tickled me. They're right. Me. That's actually Director a huge Kurt? compliment. Yes, Kurt. 
you have any direction? Have, what what I should no I do? No notes. I think for for a cold read, it was great. I I, I yeah. I, I if I had if I had actor notes, I would say, yeah. uh, uh, it was a similar thing you told me. I'd be like, oh, when you're reliving those stories, like you could. I would love to see like you go there even more. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Flashing back to that moment to like come back to the present. That may be kind of just a fun storytelling thing, but I thought it was really fun. I I don't. I don't have any overhauls or anything. I thought it was great. I love That's it. That's a great note. I love That's it. a great note. Um, Can I ask you what your favorite part to say was? Like, did you have any part where you're like, that felt really good coming out of me? Like, it felt very natural? Or like, um, right? Parts I felt in the moment were uh, talking about Private Doughboy Ryan going to Paris, uh, mm -hmm. then calling it World War II, um and because i was trying to think okay this guy is in a hanoi prison camp with yeah. his father and they both got this hunk of metal up their ass and he's got to memorize this story they're probably in this camp trying to survive and mem repeating this story back to each other as something to do for months and months because they, they don't have anything to do so that's kind of what i was thinking about what makes I it just, funny is that it's played so honestly. That's like, what that's I was like, literally going to say. Yeah. That was that's exactly what, yeah. what I was going to say. Christopher Walken's also that's extremely, he's, he's funny in that. He's yeah. so good. He's so good. And um, so, yeah, he's also, yeah, he's taking himself very seriously. And I like when you're doing that too. I think that's where the comedy comes. And also the like random touching moments as well <laughs> in the midst should, of it. Should I just go into the Devil Wears Prada monologue? Um, or do you want me to do this you again? want to just double up? Yeah, I think, why don't you go into the Devil Wears Prada one if you want. All right, great. Yes. Let's do it. Uh, it should be, I think it's the first one in Act Wait. Monkeys. Wait, did you, send, did you send it to me? Did you send it to me? It's in the Discord chat. Oh. Huh. Do you what? see it? No. Wait a minute. I don't think I have Mara... <laughs> I'm in this chat with you guys. Oh, I didn't press send. Oh, oh, <laughs> I didn't press send. I was like, I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm looking, at, looking it. at it. It's right here. I, know, I, I was press... like, what am I, what am I, I looking for? End. What am I? Right here. Okay. There we go. <laughs> there we I've go. done that on Discord. I've like sent, uh, I thought hilarious. I sent messages and I just left it without sending. And then, yeah, done that. Um, Mariah, Mariah, can you read Andy's line? Yeah, I'll be Andy for you to get this, to get the ball rolling. Um, and so where it scene starts for the for everyone, this is this is Andy, uh, Anne Hathaway's character is just getting started uh, at this company. John is John will be portraying um, Meryl Streep as Miranda Priestly, but John, I will hope that you bring your own Miranda Priestly to this to the stage. I can do that. Um, and right now. Andy, who I will be reading for, laughs because they're trying to figure out belts and they both look blue to me, but they're actually very different. And that's what I'll get. This is personal to me because way. cerulean is my favorite color. <gasps> Whoa. Really exciting. Since I was in kindergarten, really I loved exciting. the cerulean really? uh, crayon out of the box. Wow. This is huge. So this this is personal, and I would love to see that come immediately. I want to see Kindergarten John it is... on that first line. May I ask one question before we get started? Of course, always. Is it, is it Yves Saint Laurent? I think it was Yves Saint Laurent. Yeah. Is it, do you right. pronounce, do you hit the T at the end, or is it silent? Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent. Yves yeah, Saint Laurent. Yeah, I think Laurent. more silent. Okay. Saint Laurent. Like, on. What does the chat say? Oh. <laughs> you ever heard of oh? <laughs> I think that's what Whenever it we is. Went to, I went to Paris once and I just walked around the whole time going, ha ha, and Kim kept going, please stop. Please. Oh, of like, course. <laughs> I'm speaking their language. All right. What do I do from Oz? Okay, I'm going to pretend it's Eve's. E yeah, Eve's St. Laurent. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, okay, if here we go. If you believe it to be true, it's true. Okay, I'm ready. Sorry, right. there's a dog outside. You I need will to wait. Be Hold here for with dog? You. Okay, Hold for here dog. we go. Something funny? No. 
No, no, nothing. You know, it's just um, those those belts look exactly the same to me. You know, I'm I'm still learning about this stuff. <laughs> it's, yeah. This stuff. Oh. Okay, I see. You think this has nothing to do with you. You go to your closet and you select, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater, for instance, because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back. But what you don't know is that that sweater is not just blue. It's not turquoise. It's not lapis. It's actually cerulean. You're also blithely unaware of the fact that in 2002, Oscar de la Renta did a the collection of cerulean gowns, and then I think it was Yves Saint Laurent, wasn't it, who showed cerulean <laughs> military jackets? I think we need a jacket here. Mm. And then cerulean quickly showed up in the collections of eight different designers. Then it filtered down through the department stores and then trickled on down into some tragic casual corner where you, no doubt, fished it out of some clearance bin. However, that blue represents millions of dollars of countless jobs, and it's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when, in fact, you're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. Wow, John. That was so centered. That first line, I was like, oh, I'm intimidated. I got really scared. And then I was like, I think I was just giving the line. And it, you, it was literally so good that I was like, should I stay acting in the scene? <laughs> <laughs> and then I went, I'm going to exit. I'm going to leave. <laughs> like, Thank you so much. So stunning. I so would stunning. be so lucky. Meryl Streep ate that role. There's no, there was nothing left. Mm. So I should be so lucky. You did an incredible job, though. And it felt I felt very natural coming out of you. And you, you held a very terrifying space and it was captivating all at the oh same my god time. and you I'm captured extremely... like intimidation without having to like raise your voice absolutely I that's really huge. does that that's huge Thank and you, both so much. you know what i loved is like your beats were a little different and then there was one that was like quite similar to like how meryl did it and i don't want that to be like a it was similar to meryl it was like Good. I know which one. You know how sometimes it's good to steal from people? I, I and it knew was exactly like, which yeah, one you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know about. how it could have been. I think, yeah. we, need a jacket. I think like, we need a jacket here, maybe. Was that the one? Yep, yep. Yeah, and it's like, that is how the pacing should be for that line. That's exactly how it should go. And I loved yeah. it coming out of your mouth. You know, where it was just like that one time that was the same. And I was like, and it should be. And it was done, but like in your voice. Which you is very are cool, and I feel too like kind. Thank you so much. Thank you I'm for letting me do it. What um, if we well, just now Mariah, each other on this, just were like, that was terrible. Nothing worked for me. Could you imagine? I wasn't. I didn't feel anything. <laughs> I didn't feel anything. Yeah, I'm here I go, and like, you guys are gonna be like, it was fucking mm. nothing. Oh my Some, god. Some like acting classes that I've been to here. Oh god. Name Hurry names. On. Let's do it. Let's name some names. <laughs> what did? What did? Um, what did you guys each bring for me? Uh, I have a couple of options. Kurt, you go first. Oh. I sent you the opening monologue yes. from the 2015 Wachowski classic film. Oh, right. Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> <laughs> I really yeah. don't remember how this goes at all. I think I watched and, it on um, a good drunk Thanksgiving with my family. Never forget that Eddie Redmayne won an Oscar shortly after his performance in this. If you've ever looked up Eddie Redmayne in this movie, just Google Eddie Redmayne, Jupiter Ascending. It's amazing. He screams. It, wait, he, he, w- he won something for this? No, no, no. But he won mm. an Oscar shortly after. And, and Oh, uh, I see what you're saying. He won the, for the um, Theory of Everything or whatever. Everything, but. yeah. <laughs> but this is, uh, this is Mila Kunis uh, as That's Jupiter right. Jones. The That's titular Jupiter. <laughs> this feels, okay, I've only read the first sentence and I don't want to read anything else. <laughs> but can I have an intro into the tone? Is this also very serious? Oh, is it is like seriously? space Shakespeare opera. Imagine every time Eddie Redmayne's on screen, he's always like, my mother told me. That, and he like, talks like this. So it's every, everything is so, okay. so serious. And it's in space. 
Okay. It's so epic. So I'm excited. There you go. Okay. And this is literally like the opening monologue. Yeah. Okay. I'm so nervous. Exposition dump. <laughs> okay. Here I go. I'm I'm scared. Um, let me put this over here. I want to act on this side of the screen. Let me put it that side. Okay. We ready? Oh, sorry. I'm ready. <laughs> I have to set, this first line is so hard to get out of my head and I want to play it as a bit and I know that's not how it's supposed to be. Here we go. Kurt, stop. Stop. <laughs> I get how you feel, John. Sorry. <laughs> I'm muting, I'm muting. If you guys want to be, that'd be great, but also I'm a, I gotta be a tough girl. Okay, here we go. Technically speaking, I'm an alien. And from the perspective of immigration, an illegal one. My parents met at the university in St. Petersburg where he taught astrophysics and she taught applied mathematics. My mother fell in love with him and she found him almost frozen to death on the bank of Neva staring at the stars. Tonight the sky is completely full of miracles. My mother won't talk much about that time, but my aunt Nino told me about my father. Max. His name was Maximilian Jones, and he was the son of an English diplomat who always saw the best in people. And I often wonder if what happened to my mother and father changed me from someone who might have seen the best in people to someone who always expects the worst. How's my Jupiter? Not a planet. The planet. The biggest and most beautiful planet in our solar system. She's our Jupiter. And... Over my dead body, we will name her Jupiter. Soon, you will discover that your mother can be extraordinarily unreasonable at times. But fortunately for us, she remains susceptible to your father's particular charm. <laughs> what is there a whole scene happening? I think there's a scene happening at the end of this monologue. <laughs> I think because there there's like a moment where it's like Max, Max, and then it's like all this, and I'm like, I don't think there's a monologue anymore. I couldn't <laughs> find an exact manuscript. It was just the transcript. I, I was into I this. Copied. I was, I was I'm still in the there. moment. I, 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 it's not my. I just, I loved, I, I loved what you did, but I'll, I'm, I'm not gonna say anything, Kurt, because Kurt goes, this is Kurt's. Kurt's baby. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it picks up with at the. I was born without a country, without a home, without a father. That's at the end. That's what oh, it's like, at the very final. end. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I think there's dialogue. Do... I think there's no, overlapping no. dialogue. That's what's mm. happening. I'm like, Whoa. I don't think I've seen, actually seen this movie. So I see it. My perf I was but Mariah's born performance without a country, is the without a home, without a father. But I was born in the house of Leo. <laughs> okay, uh, with. <laughs> Wait, I am, wait, hold on, wait. But I, th I'm getting lore, actually, and this is kind of interesting. As I'm reading <laughs> the rest of it. Like, wait a second. This is the last sentence. With Jupiter rising at 23 degrees ascendant, according to my aunt, this is supposed to mean that I'm destined for great things, that I will find the one true love of my life. Fuck off. That's my least favorite kind of trope. Sorry. Who is the lo love of her life? Is it Channing Tatum? It's <laughs> Channing Tatum. Oh, oh. <laughs> Well. <laughs> Listen, here's what I appreciated. This this movie is one of the most bombastic and strangely self-serious things I've ever seen. And I love that you played it just like so. You went against the grain. You just said, I'm just going <laughs> to say it. I'm just going to speak it. I like How that you didn't give it, it a weight. In a I, I almost slipped, slipped into it because it really just reads so campy and it feels <laughs> so hard not to say it campy. And I was like, also, what a what a thing to cold read. Yeah. I'm, I, like when it's a lore dump cold read, which honestly, Tough. John, yours was kind of close. The Pulp Fiction one does have that like when you're reading it, you're like, what am I talking? Yours about? is more. Yours like, is more though, because there's, there's so many names in yours that that <laughs> that you like know. That. Yeah, yours is more of a lore dump. Listen, your one true love is an elf. That's a space elf. I haven't so, seen this movie. I Just need look to see up Eddie this movie. Redmayne in Jupiter Ascending, and it will what? tell you everything you need to know. I've seen that scene like where he screams. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen his stuff from it, honestly. And you know what? Which is a bummer because 
we let it slide for Eddie Redmayne, but you know who we like didn't give as much stuff after to pretend that grammar was right. But Dane DeHaan in Amazing Spider-Man mm. 2 really was acting out of his booty hole. And yes. that movie kind of, you know, had little floppy flops about it. And I was like, why aren't we making him villains all the time? I just felt like he was such a strong villain and we just didn't get him. He is him. great in Yeah, Oppenheim. I agree. He's great in that movie. Oh, I haven't seen the, the movie, the boy movie yet. But I will see it. <laughs> I haven't either because so I'm many an men. ally. So many men. I just like, really do well, Here's another see. man. And here's Dude. another man. And one another more. Another man. <laughs> How about another two? And then they're uh, like, that's Josh Peck. Why is Josh Peck in this movie? Okay. I'm, why not? All right. You know who I'm excited to see in it? Apparently, um, Roderick from Diary of a Wimpy Kid is in it. Um, yeah. And then also, him. if you guys ever saw the Santa Claus, the guy who plays the elf in the Santa Claus. Oh, um, Bernard. And it's, what's Bernard. his name? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bernard. Bernard. <laughs> Bernard. Uh, yeah. No, David Crumholtz. Um, Crumholtz. Oh, oh my yeah, god, yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna lose my mind. I'm sorry to him. He's quite funny. I'm, I, I always forget his name though. But just because Bernard is really special. Um, Great job those, with that I, material. I appreciated that you played. You threw it away. You didn't overplay it. You just let it. Thank you so much. Be and I went. I'm just watching a real conversation. And if honestly the movie had been this, I think I could have gotten through it. That's actually an incredibly nice thing to say. That is a very nice thing to say. I think if they said to me, Mariah, you're cast and you're playing, you know what I used to think about Chang Tatum, and this is not kind, but it is what my brain used to think. I truly was like, I look at him and I think Thumb from Spy Kids. Remember those Thumb guys? Yeah. And I just, and, and I, it's not I, fair. I have an unrelated question. An unrelated yeah. question. Mariah, do you go out for a lot of like commercial voiceover? No. Do you no have one a commercial wants to see voice? Me for commercials. Do you yeah, have a commercial VO agent? Because you're very good at the nonchalant, like yeah, I could just be energy. Like, TJ Maxx, we got deals every day. Well, <laughs> that's absolutely a skill that yeah. I just don't have. Very, I, I have to really it. try to do that, and so I think I feel, I feel like if you had a good commercial a good vo agent they would be you know what i've done a quite a few of though i've done like educational stuff oh industrials like right yeah prompter yeah industrial stuff and and i love doing those they feel like really they don't feel soul sucking to me they kind of feel fun and campy <laughs> so like i really like doing those but i've gotten more of those opportunities honestly than i have with voiceover i just think that there's more people who sound exactly like me who've been doing it a long time and voiceover is hard man like, yeah, it's hard. It's well, just hard to break into. Yeah, that's that's why. I mean, I'd love to do it. Um, and I got together like a nice reel last year, but um, you will kind of in this weird limbo. Um, same. same. I got I got dropped by my agent mid project uh, about three months ago. Literally, I t I emailed them and said, "Hey guys," and I sent a stupid selfie from the booth, and I was like, "Having a great time recording this project that I was working on for three months," and then they wrote me back. You mentioned and they were this like, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they'll be back and, and they're like, so hey, um, yeah, we're going to part ways. And I was like, I'm working on a show. And they were like, oh, yeah, well, well, <clears throat> once you're done with that, we'll be we'll be through. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, I really do, uh, anyway, genuinely, though, Kurt, I really do like and I don't mean this out of like any sort of I hope, you know, like any sort of pity way, like but genuinely sorry that that stressful oh. the experience happened. It's no, just it's kind of like it's kind of wild now to think about. It's just it's a fun that's a funny story, but it's like it's yeah. just it is so, voiceover in particular. It's like they are, it's such a hard code to crack. Yeah, it's like I don't know, I don't even know what it is they're looking for because I, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Um, that is, I completely agree. I, um, Kurt, mm, I would love. Oh, sorry, go ahead, John. Oh no no no, sorry. no I'm 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 done. I who, are, <laughs> I. I I didn't know what we were doing next. If you're gonna do another one, or if if you have, I was one just for gonna Kurt. ask if Kurt could do the the one I got for him, which is yes. Laura Dern's Oscar-winning monologue from Marriage Story. Yes, oh. um, I would love it. It's in it's in there. It should be. I think. Let me double check. I think it should. It's the one on the bottom. Yeah, it says in big bold, Laura Dern Marriage Story. Um, and it's Noah Bombach. Nice Let's go. That's right. Writer of Barbie. Writer of Barbie. Um, I also had 
another backup if if we had time is I would love someone to do the Mia Thermopolis Princess Diaries one where she's like, and I am Mia, Mia Rinaldi or whatever she says at the end. I'd also, you know, maybe. Okay. Um, do you have the materials? I do. I do. <laughs> okay, great, great. Um, whenever you're ready. People don't accept mothers who drink too much wine and yell at their child and call him an asshole. I get it. I do too. We can accept an imperfect dad. Let's face it. The idea of a good father was only invented like 30 years ago. Mm. Before that, father, fathers were expected to be silent and absent and unreliable and selfish and can all say we want them to be different. But on some basic level, we accept them. We love them for their fallibilities but people absolutely don't accept these same failings in mothers. We don't accept it structurally, and we don't accept it spiritually. Because the basis of our Judeo-Christian whatever is Mary, mother of Jesus, and she's perfect. She's a, a virgin who gives birth, unwaveringly supports her child, and holds his dead body when he's gone, and the dad isn't there. Gee. He didn't even do the fucking. God is in heaven. God is the father, and God doesn't show up. So you have to be perfect. And Charlie can be a fuck up and it doesn't matter. You will always be held to a different, higher standard. And it's fucked up, but mm. that's the way it is. Damn. Kurt, your reading was really, I felt like you were like really there for me as a woman. <laughs> I like, and I, like I, honestly, like I'm not even blowing smoke up your butt, but there was like, like how you said, and it's fucked up like at the end. And I was like, bitch, like, yes. <laughs> Um, as I was saying it, I was like, wow, this is yes. all, this is true. It was actually really cool. And why I think these cold reads can be so magical. And I feel like this is something you've all, I'm sure felt at some point where you're again, where you're starting to like good written works, like as you're getting yeah. through it in the cold read being like, oh man, this, I, I'm getting so into what I'm saying as it's coming out of my mouth at the exact same time. And I could feel that energy. And it was like, it was really nice. I was like, feminist icon, Kurt Mega. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it really yeah, did, really it did great. feel performative, which like, honestly, the reason why like, it's exciting to give you guys traditionally female material is because I know it would never come out of a performative place for either of you. Like you're yeah. going to be able to take the work and like be in the work. And I don't know. I was just like, I've been, again, I told them, I think I told you guys this off stream, not on stream, but I've been watching so much RuPaul's Drag Race. And so like, I'm so sorry. All my compliments are going to be like, that was sickening, Kurt. <laughs> like that was, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I really just want to be like, period, period, period. It was, it was really wonderful. Um, John, how'd you feel? I, I like to co-teach. <laughs> no, I loved it. I thought like. It was great. Yeah, I thought it was had a really clear rhythm it felt like you were taking moments to think like it felt yeah. like you were discovering some of those moments in the in the in the middle of the monologue like they felt like they were coming from like an authentic place um and it felt like it had a really nice build um yeah and i think yeah it was I would, I, very well i don't think i would tell you to go further because i think it was really good for film I think what you did was great. Yeah, that is so true. Call back. Audition really monologue. Call back. I would call you back. I'd call you I would back. Call you, I would call, call you, back. you back. Well, it's also I that's would. what I love about like I in particular, and I not to diminish either their work by making them marry, but I love Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach's Noah Baumbach's writing because I feel like it just. Yeah, I have this really. I have a beef with with dialogue. That I go, I can tell the the writer was sitting there going, "Oh, this is a killer lie," because it just takes me you out of it. Feel like, it every time. Like when you're watching a scene and someone's like, "What happened?" and then and the character will be like, "I was four years old when my father left me," and you're like, "Oh no." Oh, it's when dialogue's just exposition. Yeah, yeah. When it just you go, it, yeah, me. it's like you go, "Here comes a writer thing." And I think that both of them are especially all their scripts. This is why I love Little Women so much. Is it just uh. I just never feel that like facade. It just feel, and it's like when you read their stuff, it's super easy because you're just like it's just conversation. And it this just, is also it, 
Oh, sorry, yeah. Kurt. I'm so sorry. Finish your sentence. No, no, no. I'm, I'm like hyped, and so I. Want no, that's just it. that's why Me I too, love, I like love I love their kind of material because it, it's so it's so <laughs> easy to do, you know. I agree, and and sorry, you said Little Women, and it's funny because I knew immediately I wanted John to do this cerulean monologue, but I had so many options for you, Kurt. And my third that I didn't put in here was, um, I actually wanted you to do the Amy one from Little Women, oh. of the like, and I will get married and do this, and I would have had John do the oh, Joe March so one. Um, I really started casting in my head and thinking about you as miscast roles, both of you. And again, like I wanted you to do the twins from Parent Trap and do that scene. <laughs> I, I don't know. I love that. I, was also I have a scene for you both too. Ooh. Oh. Um. What's 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 next? Um. Well, I have a scene. I have a monologue for Mariah and a scene for both of you to do. Right. Ooh, a scene could be fun. What's yeah? I would. What's the scene from? It's from The Shape of Things by Neil LeBute. Everybody's oh, favorite play. actory play. Yeah. I want. Can we do a scene? Okay, great. Unless, what's the monologue again? The monologue's from Gone Girl. Oh, that is pretty, that is pretty. But I think a scene would be nice. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, Let's do a scene. Okay. All right, sorry, multitasking. All right, here we go. No, it's okay. I have so many pages. Um, all I right, also... so it's in the chat. It's in the chat. And it is... Um, Wait, where is it in the... There's a lot of links. It's the top one. Scene Wait. for Kurt and Mariah. There's no link with it. Oh, it's at the very top of all of our groups. It's the it's first the link that you can click on in our chat. He sent it before. It's above the words oh, monologue oh, from Mariah. It's confusing. Um, Wait, the formatting was confusing. Ways. Sorry, you're going to have to click the little rotate button at the top of the thing. I didn't have a lot of time to, I'm gonna to prep. I'm going to it. No, don't worry about it. It's perfect. It's literally the um, just most to give, perfect. Can I give you both some context of what's happening in this scene? Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, so the characters are Evelyn, an assertive and provocative art student, and Adam, uh, a shy and insecure literature major. Um. Adam is drawn to Evelyn's uh, charisma and confidence. Um, uh, Evelyn changes Adam a lot in the play. Um, and actually, the, the, the first paragraph kind of tells you what's happening. Uh, so I'll just read it. When Evelyn became... Yes. This is not, this is not uh, from the play. This is just the context. Okay. Provided by this acting book that this came from. I don't know what this is from. Am I Adam or Evelyn? <laughs> You're Evelyn. Unless you would like to. I have not been watching RuPaul's Drag Race. Unless you'd like to switch. No, I'm fine. Okay. I'll do it. Uh, so when Evelyn became Adam's girlfriend, everything about him began to change. Under Evelyn's tutelage, his hair and clothes became more stylish and he improved his physique through exercise and healthier eating. Adam, a not very confident young man, feels lucky to have a lovely, sexy, and sophisticated girlfriend like Evelyn and will do anything to please her. They both attend the same college. Adam is majoring in English. He's 22, but still a junior because he had to work to save money for school. Evelyn is a passionate artist studying for an MFA. What Adam doesn't realize is that he is Evelyn's latest work of art. She will present his transformation, including videos of their lovemaking, as her graduate thesis, and he will learn that She's most of what bitch. she has said to him has been a lie. In the following ah! scene, in the following scene, they are in a doctor's lounge. Oh my god! So they've been dating for a while. And this is literally the moment that I have to find my charger. Okay, no, I'm gonna hope that my laptop doesn't die before this is done. And if it is, it's end of stream. So this is um, not the moment where this is not the moment where he finds out about this. This is just kind of a not. moment in which they are still dating. The you beginning need your of the but but you know what? Yeah. Um, you guys die? can keep talking. My stream, if you're on my stream, I'm just holding, I'm just doing the holding image, but you'll be able to hear them still. I'll be right back in like two seconds, you guys. Great. That sounds I good. Did this, I did that scene, the confrontation scene. It's a great scene. Like a showcase uh, years ago in like, in like Hollywood for like an agent manager showcase. It's a great scene. How'd it go? And then I want to say, it was good. Yeah, it was good. I think, I think I was doing it for somebody else. Like I was, 
it wasn't even like for i was like i was their partner and they were they were the one kind of being showcased but yes yeah it's great and then i think kim i want to say kim like maybe directed this play in college or no 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 she directed danny in the deep blue sea it's also a great play but uh but no maybe she did this play but and neil butte still still making stuff still i think he directed a film this year he did he good for neil what did he what did he direct He's directed some really weird stuff. Yeah, he did direct a movie called House of Darkness um, with Justin Long and Kate Bosworth. And it's actually really good. It's very play-like, but it's it's really rad. It's kind of a horror kind of film where this oh, guy cool. gets invited over and finds out maybe the woman who invited him over might be trying to eat his soul. Sounds familiar. Maybe he's got... Very something. similar to this play. <laughs> oh, my God. Neil the Butte working out Neil, okay? uh, his okay? stuff. Um. Uh, also, my my friend Dylan is in the chat. Uh, what you call him? Please follow what you call him on Twitch. And he mentions that this is a movie um, as well. So I, yeah. if you haven't, if you don't know this play, what, it's also a really movie good movie. Called the Shape of Things. It is. Yeah. It's Paul Rudd oh. and uh, Rachel Weisz. Um, oh. It's great. Okay. Um, did he also? Did Neil Abut also write Closer? No. That was that's somebody else, right? That is, that's another a lot of a lot of great, not another great play with a lot of great relationship scenes. But that's for that's for the next time we do this. Sorry, go ahead, Mariah. Are we doing the whole scene, or should we? It might um, not be that long. What do you think? I mean, it reads pretty fast. It's pretty quick. <clears throat> yeah, I think right. it's about the oh about, it's it's probably about one Jupiter ascending monologue <laughs> length. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Um, right. Or one Shakespeare monologue. I think, yeah, it, it reads, it's just dialogue, so it reads pretty quick. Okay, I can see everything. Do you want me to read the okay. stage directions? Yeah, yeah, you want me to stage directions? I would love yeah. that. Okay, I've already read the context, okay. so I'll read the stage directions. Here we go. Okay. The Doctor's Lounge. A glistening white room with relaxing color schemes on the wall and furniture, end tables filled with magazines. Adam and Evelyn sit on opposite couches, flipping through separate copies of In Style. After a moment, Adam glances up and checks his watch. What'd they say? Like 10.30? That's 10.50 now. No big deal. You always wait at the doctor's office. I know. I just have to be at work by 12. Today? Yeah. I told you that. No, you didn't. I did. I always work. Taylor's coming in. I'm nervous. Sorry. (laughs) Taylor, walk away. I'm acting. (laughs) He gave me a thumbs up. I'm scared. I'm scared. Okay. May we start over? Yeah, let's start at the top again. I'm a professional. Um, You're both doing great. You're both doing very well. (laughs) Okay, here we go. I'm Um, very ready. The doctor's lounge. A glistening white room with relaxing color schemes on the wall and furniture, end tables filled with magazines. Adam and Evelyn sit on opposite couches, flipping through separate copies of In Style. After a moment, Adam glances up and checks his watch. What time did they say? Like 10.30. That's 10.50 now. It's no big deal. You always wait at the doctor's office. I know. I just have to be at work by 12. Today? Yeah, I told you that. No, you didn't. I did. I always work Wednesday. Really? Yeah, every Wednesday. Damn, well, I hope they, you know. Um, It's okay. I guess I could be a little late if I have to. You sure? Uh Uh-huh, yeah. It's all right. I mean, they hate it, but I can make something up. We can go. No, I want to do this. I do. You wouldn't want to get their nose chopped off. (laughs) No, come on. It's not. I'm kidding. I know. I know. I I think you're right about it. It's just like shaving it. Yeah, that, that's that's much better. Shaving your nose off. That settles the nerves. You're only <laughs> talking to them anyway. That's all. I know. It's, it's just weird to think that... People do it all the time. Especially out here. Right. No, no. You're right. I just never imagined myself as one of those people. I'm literally one of those people. Would you... And would you ever have guessed? What? No. <laughs> Did I miss a line? <laughs> I no, you are, line. you are not. I'm sorry. No, you are We're not. Back. We're back. Bullshit. Take a look. 
Where? I don't even see anything. Exactly. You had your nose done, honestly. At 16. That was my parents' birthday present to me. Thoughtful. No, I, I, no, I asked for it. I, I had this, this terrible hook. I had, like, the Jewish slope, we call it, in Lake Forest. And the only ski that runs for, for miles around. I can't believe it. I, I can't tell. That's, no, but that's the idea, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, you, know, you could be lying to me. And what would the point of that be? Uh, to get me in here? To watch chunks of my flesh get torn away? You, you could be a sadist for all I know. <laughs> Quit sweet talking me. Well, they did an amazing job. <laughs> Wait, your name's Thompson? That's not Jewish. On my mother's side, you dope. That's what makes me Jewish. Her maiden name is Tessman. Oh. And we don't have to. We don't have to stay here, Adam. No, no, no. It's all right. It just, it just makes me a little jumpy. It's like, I think that it like it's cosmetic, not corrective. You know, it's no big deal. I promise. Well, if it's cosmetic, why can't I just put on some powder or something, or you know, shade it side like we do for Richard Gere in photos? You mean before? He had it done. Yeah, take a look at American Gigolo and then at any picture of him today. Like, I'm serious. Lots of guys do it. Jewel Gray. Okay, that's it. Let's go. I'm kidding. But what What about Sting? Yeah, I knew he did. Looked totally different in Quadrophenia. I used to rent that video all the time. My mod fave. That must have been cute. Does he look better now? Sting, I mean? I suppose so. Maybe it's all the yoga. I don't know. I think... I think you'll look great. I think you have a good face and a nice shape to your nose, but it's just got a bit of... What? Like bulb at the end. It's not a bulb, like exactly, but... No, no, I get it. It's sort of the Rudolph effect. You know, at least I can guide your sleigh tonight. <laughs> you can guide my sleigh any night. <laughs> Sorry. That's good. Let's, <laughs> let's stop there. That actually was... That was good. That was good, Ed. That was real. I just want to say, I mean, <clears throat> that's only halfway through the scene, but this scene is longer than I thought it was. Uh, yeah, but like, but every that, let me just say that's so great. You both are so good at being so natural and and oh and intimate. Did Taylor hear that part? No, I hope he heard that part. I, I mean, I hope he's listening to our Taylor. That was great. Um, he waved. I don't think he was paying <laughs> attention at all. And that's love, baby. That's love. When and I'm sure Kim and Lindsay are the same. Of like. My little guy is doing their little thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I, I just tell Kim, I'll be like, I'm streaming, and she'll go, okay. 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 Yeah. Time will you be home? <laughs> or now now she doesn't trust me. She'll walk in the office and be like, are you streaming? And I'll be like, Am I live? no. And she's like, are you sure? Are you sure? Like, Am I live? I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, for real, for real. Um, I just realized it's also... 8 30 did kurt did you have an out at this time or i'm waiting for my next oh, cool. student to uh uh hop in so i think i got a few minutes but yeah i like that scene it's it's uh i like uh again i like i really enjoy dialogue and plays that feels so much play dialogue feels mm -hmm. like characters saying things it's like it's snowing today but what time is it yeah it's time for us to leave leave where yeah. You want, and you go, what the, what is happening? I you like know, dialogue where they're just saying stuff to each other, you know? I know. It was actually like <laughs> kind of nice. But I'll tell you this, and I don't know if either of you picked up on this when we were doing the actual scene. Um, I thought I was getting the nose job, and that's the magic of a cold read, is that I realized like two <laughs> lines later, I was like, oh, you're getting the nose job. But I have already had one done. I was like learning it as we were going, but I was like, I've been giving all of you guys these notes and then and now here I am with doing the exact same thing where it's like, ooh, this is getting more a part of me the longer that we get. I don't know. I just think you can have so many fun discoveries within cold reads. I think that they can be so helpful for an actor. Well, like there's stuff I would have translated if we were to work on this. I, I like this too because I just like, I love cold reading stuff. Like so one fun. of my favorite parts of any process of doing a new project is when you get to read through it the first time. It's just fun because – there's yeah. no stakes you're you know it's like it's inherently like messy and i like that's one of my favorite G i don't know if you guys know joe moses but joe moses and yeah. i for yeah. like a while back before he went to law school 
Joe and I started like a little like thing kind of like this with the whole idea was every Monday we rented a studio and we would just show up and invite friends to bring monologue scenes. Maybe you oh, wrote cool. something and it was just like a space to like, I'm just going to get up and read it. And you read this character. And it was like, and it was like I Tessa and Joe and I, and a few other people would show up here and there. And it was like just fun. And it felt really chill to like, I wrote a scene, like maybe there's something to it. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a script here or something. And I like it. I It's just fun to try things and not feel like the weight of performance, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It really takes the stakes away and allows you to just play together as actors. And it's like, and Kurt, we've done so little scenes together ever. So there was like also a moment where I was like, Oh my God, I'm acting with Kurt. <laughs> have we ever like gotten to actually do like a scene scene together? I don't, I don't think, think so. our, we've ever done more than like, four back and forth lines directly to each other or something like that that was like Listen, our, definitely our longest zoe week. and zoe and uh, zach one day one day they're they're coming back they're, <laughs> i i mean i don't know <laughs> you both I are think just probably they have potential you both are such great actors i love watching you both perform yeah. and also you what both have gotten that? so much that's, better that's oh thank as well you. that's so nice um I, I think that's like my favorite thing about acting is you just like never stop growing, you that's know? True. And like, I used to like look at old stuff, like old bootlegs of me and like absolutely cringe or just be like, <laughs> what am I doing? Or like, what's going on? And yeah, me too. at this point it's like, oh wow, how cool that I would know, like, you know what? I would actually change this or I would actually do this. That just shows that I've grown to be able to look yeah. at things with like that sort of perspective. So instead of like shaming myself or judging myself, it's just like, I've grown since then. And that's very cool. Trying to make films, honestly, was mm. really help, really helpful in learning to get over the the like absolute hatred I had of watching myself because I'd watch myself in things so much that I disassociated and I'd just be like, "That's some Absolutely. guy. I don't know who that is." Absolutely. And it kind of helped me get past that mental barrier of because sometimes if I'm doing a project, I'll start to think about how will this look when somebody else is watching it, and then it's like you're completely in your own head and. So honestly, like editing things and going, it'll be fine. I don't know. It'll be fine. It's like yeah, just doing it enough that I went past hating myself to being like, I don't hate myself anymore. I, um, but oh, but I, I also have... totally understand when people don't want to watch themselves. I totally get it. I'm like, I respect that. I feel that way about hearing myself sing. I, I get really uncomfortable hearing myself sing. Me too. Myself sing. Yeah. yeah. I have a hard time hearing myself, but it's but it helps I a lot. Feel like... Yeah. No, I feel the exact same way. And I know that that's probably annoying to hear, like, coming from me, who's, like, part of my brand for fucking ever is, like, I sing. But that's why it took me 28 years to release music. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to hear no, myself it's... back, you know? <laughs> so yeah, It's weird when you love a thing and you want to be good at it, but then you yeah. just can't, you can't accept it of yourself. Like, every time I go home for the holidays, my mom's like, will you sing, you and Kim sing Oh Holy Night for oh my, my God, friends? Yeah. And we're like, no absolutely not that's a nightmare and she's like you do it all the time and i'm like yes but when i've prepared and i've rehearsed like yeah. this is now i just feel extremely vulnerable so <laughs> um just. i have a question before we conclude yeah um is this something that you both liked doing should we do this again sometime maybe not necessarily right away but sometime soon yeah that's Heck yeah it also be fun to do I think this would be fun to do in person. And I think we could even have some day players if this would yes. grow. Yeah. Yes, let's let's fun. get Corey Doris in here. Ah, the real one. <laughs> the real one. <laughs> the real one. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just to address this on stream. Um, we had some impersonators last stream and like no one's mad at anybody. Like it's no. fine. But it's just one of those things of like Let's not do that in the future, just for safety reasons and whatnot. And like, but honest to God, for that one time that we did it, that one time that that happened, it was so funny. John texting me and Kurt and going, did Corey ever reply? And I was like, oh, let me, let me check. And just seeing that email that said, was this Zoom link meant for me? And I texted him and I was like, you weren't in a chat, were you? And he was, to whoever was doing it, if you're watching, he was like simultaneously pissed, but mainly pissed that he wasn't actually there and couldn't join the Zoom, which I thought was really sweet. And he was just like, that wasn't gotta me. Get him. I was you gotta get him. I was at the gym. <laughs> That's why when people were like, Lauren's in the YouTube chat, I was like, there is no there's way. There's no way. There's no way. 
we know Lauren. There's no way that she'd be like, I'm going to join this YouTube channel. There's no, no way because no way. it's not even that she wouldn't watch us. It's that has Lauren ever joined a YouTube chat? It's no. like, I don't think that's, that's not what she does on the reg. And that's, and that's very real. Another, <laughs> um, another thing I, I want to try, I'm a little nervous about it, but I want to try doing a, a cooking or baking stream. And I was wondering Ooh, yeah. if you wouldn't mind if you would love or like to come over and I would make both of you pancakes. I would love I, that. I make really, really good. I've practiced making pancakes a lot. I make real. I'll send you photos. Uh, I make really great pancakes. pancakes I'll, I'll make, I, in fact, legitimate. if you come over, I'll make pancakes and popovers. Ah! <laughs> pancakes are legitimately my favorite thing in the entire world. So. Me too. I would love it. And you know what? They're like my... They're like, have you guys seen This Is the End? It's a yes. movie that I quote a lot. But yes, yes. there's one of it that's like the part where like James Franco gets a Milky Way to have at the end of his party. And he's like, yes. I specifically got it for that. It's my special treat. Um, that is like when I get pancakes, that's like how I feel about it. It's like, I specifically wanted pancakes today. That was my special thing. Um, yes. So John, I think the idea of like you even... Offering to make us pancakes is um, the nicest thing you could say to me. Thank I you. will be there with a fork and a smile. A I love smile. making food <laughs> for my friends. Wow. So I would love that so much. I think that would be that's also like so beautiful and yet so funny at the same time. Would you wear would a, like do you have a cooking persona or is it still you? Like a character or is it just still completely? It's ju it's just me. It's me with an apron. Yes. It's like height and cook John. Yeah. Yes, it's height and cook John. Yeah. Height and cook John. That's what I I also love cooking and baking. So that'd be a fun. We could we could rotate. Rotate. Oh I would God. absolutely. I, would I don't absolutely. know how to bake. I actually can't really bake, but I can cook quite well. So What's I your favorite thing to cook? Oh, I really like making paella. Um, so we're going my route. Um, I could also, yeah, a lot of like more stuff that's like family and cultural. Like I'd make some good latkes for you guys. Some oh, potato pancakes. I love latkes. Oh my that could God. Be fun. Um, yeah, that could, that could be pretty cool. But I also make like good salmon, things like, things like Do that. you guys like seafood? I love I seafood. I love seafood. One of the things yeah. I love to make, I think it's my best thing that I make because I can't do dairy. Um, I make yep. a uh, Alfredo, like a salmon seafood Alfredo, but with uh, cashews. It's a cashew like garlic God, base. Fuck. One of the best things that? I've ever had. Salmon and I, I would love to make with that. cashew. Yeah, that sounds it's like a cashew. cashew. That's that's the no. sauce. Yeah, with cashew. That yeah, sounds yeah, yeah, fucking I, I like delicious. Boil cashews and it's like garlic and onions that I like saute and like chicken broth for oh like God. an hour. And then anyway, you blend it. It's ama it's amazing. It's it's this genuinely. I've given it to people and not told them that it was dairy free, and they'll be like, "This is the best Alfredo I've ever had." And I'm like, "No dairy." So anyway, that's be literally Kurt. If you were to offer that to me and I didn't know that it was dairy free, and you'd be like, "I made this salmon Alfredo," it'd be one of those moments where like a bitch doesn't pray much anymore. I would start <laughs> praying for my time. Uh, I'm not even Catholic. I don't even know which way to go. Um, but like I, but you going like it's cashews. I'm like I need the shit yeah. out of that. that sounds <laughs> fucking great. I, know. I eat the damn. I, that sounds so fun. We should definitely do it. We should definitely do that. Absolutely. Yep. Um, Although, and I'm saying this live, but I have you guys, so I'm just gonna say it. We all have. We've also been talking about just we should just have a dinner party with our respective partners and have a good night soon without. Sorry guys, I don't want to leave all of our viewers. Yeah, out, but we sorry. We don't if if no stream. Cameras off. Why do why do things? Why do anything? If no, no stream, why do? If no <laughs> stream, why do? Why do no? If no, no stream, why live? No, no. stream, why uh, live? That we'll, sounds. We'll post lovely. photos. I would yeah. love to do that. That sounds so. Um, cool. um that, our yeah. partners are pretty cool. I really they're like. Pretty them. cool. Yeah, they're pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I think they're really I, cute. I've gotten in hot water with Kim because I called Kim my roommate one time on Twitch stream because I don't Wrong. want everyone to associate her as – because for years pre-StarKid stuff, people would be like, your wife. And it's like, well, yeah, but also name? many other things. And so somebody like somebody in the stream was like, who was that? And I was like, I was my roommate, partner, and then everybody has been roasting me. 
And now they're like, your roommate, your roommate. But I get Which your intent. Your intent she makes is. so much sense. <laughs> but I get where <laughs> I mean I, I get where the I, execution. I deserve to be roasted. It's it's, it's fair. <laughs> it's fair. That's really cute, actually. I love that. I feel like if I called Taylor my roommate when he'd be walking by and he heard it, he would he probably wouldn't care, but he'd be like, bitch. That's like, exactly <laughs> Kim was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, what? Hello? Yeah. And it was like out here. <laughs> um, uh, one of my delightful mods and viewers, Kay, just said, and they were roommates, which is a really good <laughs> response to that. Yep. To that, I'm so glad I looked at the chat in that exact moment. Um, <laughs> well, I think I'm going to end here because I need to eat dinner and go piss girl. Um, so you guys I got us. Thing, right? I got it. No. Oh, God. I saw both of your faces just go, ooh, when I said piss girl. And I went, I don't think they know that audio. <laughs> you you haven't heard the, like, I got, like, go piss girl? Yeah, go piss girl. <laughs> I know what it means. I gotta go. I, I know what it means. I know what In it my means. my head, I thought one of two things. I, I know, I'm cool. And or I need to pee. I don't know which. It but is both. both are valid. It is okay. both. It's, the, the truth is that I'm going to. Um, order some dinner and also go to the restroom if we're gonna be respectful, young lady. Go piss girl. Um, go, I, go piss girl. See, you done. That's literally exactly how you're supposed to say it. It's like it's the response of I need to go to the bathroom. Go piss go girl. Piss, go piss girl. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was perfect. That was using it in a sentence. That really Got was. It. Got it. That makes sense. Okay. Um, thank God we got through that. Um, I would love to do this again with you guys, and um, we'll talk off stream, but maybe an earlier one so that this is a later time for a lot of people. We'll do one maybe earlier in the day next time. Sounds perfect. Great. Sounds great. Uh, morning pancakes. Stop. I'm so excited. Go piss, girl. <laughs> Go piss, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I I never want anyone else to say it but you. Ever again for the go, this girl. <laughs> I gotta go. I'm like, you're making me not sober laugh for a sober person right now, which is really nice. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Um, I love everyone who watched. This is yeah, great. thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Live. This is a blast. Um, I don't remember how to do that. Thing. We all have MFAs now. So. Yep, we all have MFAs now. Yeah. Um, I'm stopping going live. Me too.